In this video, I will be using ethanol and sulfuric acid to make diethyl ether. Diethyl ether is a very useful solvent for many applications, and I will be using it to make Grignard reagents, which can only be done in anhydrous diethyl ether. What will happen during the reaction is an acid catalyzed dehydration. Ethanol is able to take up an hydrogen from sulfuric acid, wherefore another ethanol molecule can attack that ethanol and kick off the water. It then forms an intermediate, a protonated diethyl ether, where the remaining hydrogen can be taken up by any molecule in the solution that can act as a base. So this can be either ethanol, water or the sulfate ion. After this, the electron pair of the bond moves onto the ether and the reaction is finished. So for the reaction, I only need ethanol and concentrated sulfuric acid. And for the purification, a saturated sodium chloride solution, a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution and calcium chloride. So first, I set up a 3 neck flask in an ice bath and I add 90 ml of ethanol. I drop in a stir bar, add a thermometer and wait for the ethanol to cool down. Then I attach an addition funnel that contains 80 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid and add it dropwise to the ethanol. When the addition is finished, I remove the ice bath and add a heating block. Now, I set it up for a fractional distillation and this is what the setup looks like. I turn on the heating and add 250 ml of ethanol to the addition funnel. After a while, the solution reached around 130 C and started to boil and white vapors were coming off the mixture. I put an ice bath under the receiving flask and we can see liquid collecting relatively quickly, but there's also a lot of vapor. Now that I am collecting something in the receiving flask, I can open the addition funnel and drip in ethanol as fast as the drip rate in the receiving flask. During the reaction, I noticed that the fractionation column was too hot and ethanol vapors were also coming over. The thermometer above the fractionation column read the boiling point of ethanol. Since the mixture in the flask has to stay about 140 to 145 C, I can't simply lower the temperature. Instead, I will try to cool down the column. The first thing I did was removing the glass mantle around it. This should allow the air to cool things down. But unfortunately, it wasn't very effective and the temperature stayed the same. Instead, I opted to wrap part of the column in paper towels and soak them in water. This turned out to be effective and the thermometer started showing around the boiling point of diethyl ether. After doing this, I let it continue for a while and stopped the distillation when pretty much nothing more came over. So I removed the heat source and stopped the distillation. So here we have the crude yield of diethyl ether which I will have to wash using the saturated sodium bicarbonate solution and the saturated sodium chloride solution. So I transferred everything to a separatory funnel and I poured in about 30 milliliters of the saturated sodium bicarbonate solution. The mixture started to bubble a lot, which means there's likely some sulfuric acid that came over during the distillation. Since the temperature of the distillate was too high during the beginning of the distillation, it is not too surprising that a bit of sulfuric acid came over as well. I let it bubble for a while and then I mix it around with regular venting. I repeat this process two more times with the sodium bicarbonate solution and one time with the sodium chloride solution. Afterward, I remove the water layer and drain the diethyl ether into a beaker. I set the beaker in an ice bath and then added a bunch of calcium chloride to dry it. I cover it with a watch glass, swirl it around a bit to cool it down and let it sit overnight. When I come back the next day, it looks pretty much the same and I take it out of the bath. I transfer all of the contents to a flask, including the calcium chloride. Since the boiling point of diethyl ether is so low, I can keep the calcium chloride in the flask while distilling without having to worry about the water coming over. So I set it up for a regular distillation and I don't have to add in a stir bar since the calcium chloride beads work nicely as boiling chips. It quickly started to boil and the diethyl ether started coming over in the receiving flask. After a while the flask is almost dry and not much more is coming over, so I stopped the distillation. So this is the final yield of diethyl ether. 
the yield came out to be 45%, which is lower than the protocol I was following, which had a yield of 70%. Since the distillate temperature was too high for part of my reaction, some ethanol instantly boiled over and wasn't allowed to react to form diethyl ether, which is probably why my yield is a bit lower. Anyhow, I transferred the liquid to an aluminum bottle that contains molecular sieves. I then add a very small scoop of hydroquinone, which acts as an inhibitor to prevent peroxide formation during storage. The recommended inhibitor concentrations when using hydroquinone is only 0.002%, which is about 3 mg. Since I don't have the analytical balance, I just put in a very small scoop which is likely only a few milligrams. Now that it is finished, I can safely store and use my diethyl ether, which I will store in the fridge and use in one of my future videos. If you'd like to see more chemistry videos, please subscribe. And if you want to support my channel, I set up a Patreon account and I also added YouTube memberships. So if you're interested, please follow the link in the description. Anyhow, I appreciate it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.